Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Instead of receiving the judgment of God, we receive the mercy of God. But somewhere between God establishing that covenant with the nation of Israel, 450 years later, you find that the nation of Israel had forgot about uh, their pact with God, that they would be a keeper of the presence of God. No longer is the Ark of the Covenant something that is valuable and represented God's divine word and God's divine power and God's divine uh, uh, protection and provision. Amen. But somewhere they forgot about it. Amen. It's easy to forget about the presence of God in our life. Amen. But when we enter into a covenant with God Almighty, Amen. Elohim, Amen. Yahweh back in these uh, uh, Old Testament days, God desires for us to hold up with our end of the covenant so that He can bargain and hold up with His end of the covenant. We are keepers of the presence of God. Amen? I said we are keepers of the presence of God. Amen? Let me move quickly. We find that here in, as 450 years passes by, we find that the nation of Israel no longer are they holding to keeping the presence of God, uh, but they use the Ark of the Covenant kind of like in an emergency tool, kind of like a spare tire, if you will. When they get in trouble, they pull it out and they use it. We find that they were in battle against the Philistines. And as they're there in battle with the Philistines, uh, they're losing the battle. And all of a sudden, Ophni and Phinehas, uh, the high priest and that judge, uh, Eli, they, his sons come and they say, well, go get the Ark of the Covenant and we'll bring it. It's kind of like a good luck charm. It'll help us win the battle. And so the Philistines saw that here comes Hophni and Phinehas and they're bringing the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. They were to be keepers of the presence of God, but they only used it as a spare tire. They only used it in emergencies. They only used it as a good luck charm. Let me tell you, amen, the power of prayer is not just when we get between a rock and a hard place or when everything's going on against us. The power is our wireless connection to God that needs to be used day and night in worship and communion with God. The presence of God in our life is more than Sunday morning. It's more than Miracle Revival Church. Amen. It is a covenant between us and God that we keep His presence day and night. Off night, Phineas bring the Ark uh, uh, of the Covenant. We see the Philistines. Uh, they see the Ark of the Covenant. And they realize that if there's anything that we need to do, we need to get the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. We need to get it. We need to take it away from them. Amen. While Israel is awestruck by it. Amen. Here it is to the Philistines. They don't just panic. They think if we can get that from them, uh, we will win. And so we know the story. There's Hop and Phineas. They're slain, Sister Susan. The Ark Ark of the Covenant is taken by the Philistines. The word is given back to Eli. He falls and breaks his neck. Uh, there's Phineas' wife. She's in labor. She delivers a baby and lives long enough to call his name Ichabod. The presence of God has departed. And then she dies. Amen. Here it is, the Ark of the Covenant. It's taken away and it's put uh, in, the, in the Philistine camp. It's placed in Ishtad. It's placed uh, by, by the god Dagon. And there it is. God says, listen, if my people won't keep up their end of the covenant, I'd rather go live with the enemy than with people who's forsaken the covenant. I'm fearful that's where the church is. Amen. Everything else has its importance over the presence of God. Amen. Everything else seems to interfere. Amen. With our worship to God, our commitment to God, and our covenant to God. Listen, when you got saved, God saved your soul from hell. It wasn't a one-time commitment that you walk away from and you haphazardly take care of. But God wants you to take hold of that covenant and hold tighter to it than ever before. Four. Here it was. 34,000 footmen died when the Philistines came against the Israelites. Here it was. Uh, 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 Eli and his sons died. Phineas' wife dies. 
Now, the Ark of the Covenant, amen, uh, 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 comes back because uh, uh, there in the Philistine camps, particularly they're getting diseases, they want rid of it, and so they bring it back and they drop it off. The Philistines decide to open it and see what's in it. There are 50,000 men died. Can you imagine that there within the nation of Israel, they are attending over 84,000 funerals? Can you imagine that? The loss. So they decide that they're going to take the Ark of the Covenant back and listen to me for a few moments. They're going to take the Ark of the Covenant back and they're going to put it in Abinadab's house. Now Abinadab has some sons, three, Eleazar, Uzzah, and Ahio. And so here it is, it's placed in the house of Abinadab. As it's placed there, these young men understood something. That if this Ark of the Covenant, amen, Brother Eugene, Sister Alice, listen, this Ark of the Covenant is going to stay in this house. Things are going to have to change. Are you listening to me this morning? If the presence of God is going to be in our house, things are going to have to change. It's going to have to be the primary thing in our house. This covenant calls us that we're going to have to take care of this presence of God more than anything else. Amen. It's going to come before anything. It's going to affect our responsibility. It's going to affect our conduct. It's going to affect our faithfulness. It's going to establish a relationship with us and it. Amen. We're going to have to preserve it. We're going to have to maintain it. We're going to have to defend it. Amen. Or we're going to have to live a personal life of holiness around it. Amen. If it's going to stay in our house. Let me tell you, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and husbands and wives, amen, if the presence of God is going to be in our house, amen, there's going to have to be some changes. Amen. Our life is going to have to center around it. It's going to affect our conduct. It's going to affect our priorities. It's going to affect the way that we live because we are keeping up with our end of the covenant. And so here it is, Eliezer, and he was the one that says, listen, my brothers can go and do whatever, but I am making my my life or a life of holiness and a life of commitment that I can take care of the presence of God. Amen. Because it's the most important thing to me. So here it was, Eliezer, when he looked at this ark, we find that there is conviction that strikes him. He said, Dad, I'll reprioritize my life because I want to take care of this. Listen, when we take the presence of God in our life, we will reprioritize. Can I just say something? It will change our life. Amen. We will be in church. Amen. It won't just be a second guess to us. Yes, I know that there are things that happen in life. Amen. Things come up, and I know an occasional missing. But when folks don't attend church on a regular basis, if you aren't there, amen, you need to reprioritize. You broke your commitment with God. Amen. If you allow language to be said that was once never said, amen, and you need to reprioritize. Amen. If prayer isn't a regular part of your life every day, you need to reprioritize. Amen. If the Word of God isn't in your life and affecting you every day, you need to reprioritize. Amen. And here it is. The Ark of the Covenant was blessed because there was a young man who reprioritized his life. Listen, no one else knows how to handle it. No one else knows how to do it. Amen. Where it brought disease and where it brought heartache and where it brought abandonment. This young man knew what it was like to enter into a covenant. When we are in a covenant with God, that is our priority. I'm talking about we are the keepers of God's presence. Everything we do, everything we say, the life, the, the life that we live. Listen, this morning... Uh, I have to tell you, Eugene, I was, you sent me deep into myself to think about me and my family life. And I'll tell you, I make family devotions is a priority. We don't miss it in our house. But even deeper than that, everything about our home, it has to be the priority of the presence of God. See, resetting goals and knowing that even for Eliezer, his mate, his friends, every place he was, he wanted to make sure that he vowed to protect, to honor, and guard the presence of God. 
Listen, he wasn't a priest. He wasn't, he wasn't a king. Uh, but he was someone who was a custodian of the presence of God. You and I are custodians of the presence of God. And we need to make sure that we're doing our best to take care of it. It stayed there for 20 years. And when David heard of the blessing of it, oh, he wanted to bring it back to, the, uh, to, to Israel. And as he goes to move it, we find that he kind of did it the Philistine way. He didn't do it honorable to God. And there was Ohio, and he, and he, uh, or Isaac, he stuck out his hand to steady the, the, the ark because it hit a rut or it hit a bump. And all of a sudden, there he was, and he died. Do you know what? Because he never established a commitment to being a keeper of the presence of God. Brother and sister, I want to tell you something. We need to make sure that we've established a commitment to God and taking care of His presence, that it's not haphazard in our life, but it is a commitment and we do it God's way. It stopped and some months later, David researched, he heard how that he, he could bring it back the appropriate way. And as he brings the, the Ark of the Covenant back, amen, uh, 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 he, he brings it back the right way after he made the right discovery and he puts it in a place, a beautiful place for 40 years into his son Solomon takes and puts it in a place that's committed to God. I want to tell you that we are keepers of the presence of God this morning. Amen. And the Lord will keep us as we keep Him. It is a covenant. So many people wonder, why has God forsaken me? And why has God forgotten about me? I wonder, would you dig deep inside of yourself and ask yourself, did you forget God somewhere along the way? And what responsibility does He have to keep His end of the covenant? If you've already broke yours, He's loose from it. God help us. What did Paul tell Timothy? He said, Timothy, that which is committed to you, be thou a faithful story. Keep it. See, the same God if we're faithful to is the same God who will be faithful to us and will establish us. I'm closing very quickly. I'll be done in a minute. I'm going to ask you this morning, how deep is your commitment to God? I'm going to give you the layout very quickly. It should be your relationship with God. If you're married, then you have a relationship with your wife or your husband. Hello, not your children. You're getting it out of line. The authority is God. Then your spouse. Then your children. And then your spouse. Let me tell you, I've had to learn to schedule my life. There are certain hours of the day that I don't answer my phone. If you call me, I will listen to your message. But there's some hours in which it's dedicated to my wife and my girls and our devotion time. Not that you're not important to me. You're very important. And if it's an emergency, I can change things up. But first of all, my commitment is to God and to my family. And then the change is on. The problem of it is, is most of us lack our commitment to God. <clears throat> my family is very important to me. But my God is first. I will model Jesus Christ always before them. If I keep Him first. It's a dangerous place when you put God on the back burner and say, God, I'll pull you out as a spare tire. I'll pull you out as my emergency. I'll pull you out as my last resort. When God's commitment that we make when we get saved is a commitment to be a keeper of His presence. My question to you this morning, no fanfare. Are you a keeper of God's presence? Or are you on the phone out where the enemy shows up his face as a good of child? This morning, God is looking for men and women who will be faithful to their commitment to Him. Would you come this morning about you your heart, your mind, your soul? Amen. You are a keeper of God's presence. How low are you keeping? Let's get her.
for husbands. He's looking for wives. Amen. He's looking for men and women of all ages. Amen.